In this video, I want to go over an image markup tool for Linux users called Annotator. And if you found this video on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video that shows you the instructions for installing it and a brief description on how to use it. Now, as I said here, Annotator is an image markup tool for Linux users. It is developed by Trevor Williams, and it's very similar to a basic version of the shutter drawing tool. And if you click here, I actually have the shutter drawing tool and at the current time of making this video shutter is at version 0.99 and I do have the instructions for installing shutter on your system if you'd like a more advanced uh, annotation tool for marking up your images but if you only need something very basic and you already have your favorite screenshot tool then you can install annotator to mark up your images now annotator can be set up as a flat pack so if you click here it will take you to the developers website and you can download it as a flat pack and for those of you that are elementary uh, Linux users you can actually download it from your elementary app center by bringing up the elementary app center so for those of you that have Linux that have flat pack set up on your system you can actually just download it as a flat pack and install it on your system for you Ubuntu users and Debian users I have a link here to show you the quick setup or you can go to flat pack find your operating system show you how to set up flat pack on your system and that way you can download the flat pack file and install it on your system so once I downloaded the flat pack file this was the name at the time of making the video and it went to my downloads folder I opened my downloads folder and I double click the file and I do have the software center on my computer and if you don't have the software center you can actually go and I have more information about the software center It's also referred to as the GNOME software center actually you don't need to even click that link I decided to put sudo apt install the GNOME software center for you Ubuntu and Debian based users and that will install the GNOME software center on your system but it won't install flat packs by double clicking it until you actually install the flat pack support for the software it's a plug-in after you install the GNOME software you go to sudo apt install GNOME dash software dash plugin dash flat pack once you install the plugin then that way when you double click the file it will open up the software center and allow you to click the install button so it's just a click of a button rather than opening up the terminal to install it this is an easy way to install flat packs just click the install button it will open up an authenticate dialog box you put your password in click the authenticate button and just wait a few moments and when it does the install button will change to a launch button and you will also have a remove button so if you decide that you ever want to remove it you just open up the software center search for annotator and then click the remove button and it will take it off your system so it's very, very simple now if you don't want to open up software and sit and click launch every time it will install it within your menu so you can go to graphics as you can see here annotator is at the top so it puts it in alphabetical order or it did in my case so that when I clicked onto it it will open now I do have a quick remove for those of you that installed it by the software center just open up software center search click remove and it will take it off your system it will prompt you off probably for your password then authenticate and it'll, or take it off your system System. Now the first time you run annotator either by the launch button or by clicking on annotator within the menu it will open up to look like a very basic uh, application and then you can tell it's a GNOME application. You do have some buttons across the top bar I call the title bar but then here you'll have a welcome to annotator let's get started annotating an image. There's two ways that you can open an image you can click this link here and locate an image on your system or if you got an image on the clipboard you can click here and paste it from the clipboard into the program itself so once that you got your image loaded it then gives you another additional toolbar so you do have some toolbars across a, to a very mi minimum toolbar across the top like I like to call it the title bar which there's no title on the title bar and then you got a more advanced toolbar when I say advanced there's not a lot of advanced tools there but you do have some tools on both bars here this is an open image button so if you decide you got the wrong image you can just click the open folder locate the correct image and it will open it within the application the program if you make a mistake while working on or marking up an image you hit the back button which is undo neither one of these are dope bolded because this is just a current image open with no modifications or markups once you start marking it up then you got this will become bold which means you can undo and then this one will become bold means you can go back and redo 
Here's where you add shapes to the image, and it's not just a square shape. When you click on that, it will have a drop down with a variety of shapes to choose from. Here's where you can also add a sticker, and there's lots of stickers that you can click on to, to add stickers to the image. Here's where you can put a, add a sequence number. As you saw here, I have a number one for this particular doghouse and number two for this zoomed in doghouse. So you can add a sequence of events within an image. Then you got your freehand pencil tool here. It's like on any like draw that you've ever used, like on Microsoft Draw or any drawing program within a Linux or Mac system. Here's where you click on to add text. So you can capital A and little a where you add text to your images. So you can click here and you can add text like you've seen here, but you come over here to actually change the font and the font properties. This allows you to add text. This allows you to change its properties. This is the magnifier. As you can see, it's a little magnifying tool. So here's the original doghouse. They both look very similar, but after I magnified it, it zoomed in on that image, and I can actually save that to that image as I have here below. Here is where you add a blur box. So as you can see, here was the clear doghouse, and here's where I blurred it. So if you have some, like minors, if you're a teacher, and you want to blur the minors in your image, or if you don't have any forms filled out by the parents giving you permission to use their child online, you can blur by using the blur box. You also have where you can crop out a section. You can select the part of your image and crop that particular section. Here's where you can resize an image by clicking that button it will actually bring up this dialog box allowing you to change the size and even put margins on your image so this is the resize an image button on the toolbar this allows you to change the shape color so if you've chose a shape to add a shape you can change the color by choosing the shape color button this allows you to change the border so if you put a margin around it a border you can actually change the color of the border by here this again allows you to change the font properties here's where you can zoom in closer on your image the whole image and here's where if you're going to save the image once you finish making it you can click the export button so once you finish making changes you can export your image as a JPEG a PNG file a TIFF file a BMP a PDF SVG or you can copy it to the clipboard or you can print your modified image so I didn't do a lot of uh, things here on the this particular picture, but as I said, there's not a lot, a lot, a lot of features that you have. Now I did click the JPEG up here. Now instead of saving it as a JPEG, if you want to put the dot, once you give it a name, and then I put dot JPG. As you can see here, it'll save it as a JPEG. But actually, if you save it JPEG, it will leave out the E, but it still be in the JPEG format. And below is the result of the saved. So when you put the name here and click export, it will put it wherever the location that you have here. So in this case, this was my modified markup image of the original image, and I saved it with a different name. Again, if you want to resize, I do show you while I go how to click the resize button and put in different images. So here's some of the features from the website. If you click here, these are features taken directly from it. So let's actually open up the program and show you how to use it. Now let me go to graphics and I'll choose annotator. And as you can see here it says open an image from a file or paste from the clipboard. I'm going to go to my pictures and I'll choose the annotator and I think this was number picture 12 if I'm not mistaken. It is. This is the picture that I I actually changed which has the part of the the actual program here. So you'd seen double buttons because that was a that where I saved it as that was the original name so I can scroll down you can zoom in but I don't want to see the toolbar up here now let's go and let me show you compare it with the actual uh, screenshot drawing tool with I'm going to open this with and I can say shutter shutter's not just a screenshot t utility you know here's the picture that, that I just opened with shutter and here is the drawing tool that if I click edit now this is the shutter drawing tool so as you can see here you got a lot of tools here several tools here you even got a lot of tools here and additional features on the toolbar so if you want a more advanced markup tool for images I recommend you to install the shutter screenshot and if you even got your favorite one you don't have to load it at the startup you can just have shutter or if you need advanced features of the shutter screenshot tool along with the drawing the markup or the drawing tool so let me close this out but notice here how it has a similar kind of feel to it than the actual program itself let me close this this is the actual program 
Now the thing I can say about this, there's ways of tweaking it, but notice I'm using a dark theme, which Shutter carried that dark theme. This particular program doesn't. So when I open up my Kaha File Manager and I open up most programs on my system, you see the dark theme matches my overall theme. But this particular program here doesn't match my things. But like I said, I could go in there and tweak that, but that's not what this particular video is about. Let me quickly show you. This right here is where you can go and open an image. These are called tool tips. So if you don't understand what a button is, hover over that button and you'll get a tool tip. Here's the undo, the redo the add a shape, add a sticker, add a sequence number, the pencil tool, the add a text, the add a magnifier, add a blur, crop an image, resize an image, shape color, shape border, font properties, the zoom, and it's at 100%. If you click here, you can change whatever uh, percent. You can use control zero to go back to the actual size. You can go control one to fit. And as you can see here, I have to scroll down if I wanted to fit it, but I don't really want to in this case since it has the toolbar up here. Here's where you go to export it as any of those that I showed you about. There's the minimize, the maximize, and the close button. Let's go through here and take a look at these buttons on the toolbar. When you click these, you can add shapes such as a square, a solid square, and if you wanted to change the color of the shape, you go and click this and change the color that you put in there. You've got a circle, a solid circle, a star, a solid star. You can choose a line, or you can actually choose an arrow. As you can see here, I put them in line. So if I wanted to put a line in my uh, image, as you can see here, it's stuck the line here. I can click onto it and drag it wherever I want. All right, there it goes. It's kind of picky. It's very, there we go. You can drag it where you want, and if you want to extend the line, you can extend it. You can turn it in any direction. So that is how you can add a feature. And notice it shows you the last feature that you stuck in here. If I don't really want that line on my drawing, I go back and hit undo, 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 and it's gone. And if I decided, well, I do want it, I go back and hit redo, but in this case I don't. Here is where you can install a lot of different photos. You can install even images from videos. Now you can't really install a video and save it as an image and the video works, but you can save a video, an image from a video. So if you wanted to put a, a landscape picture, you come here and there's your landscape picture and you can drag it wherever you want to put it in the image. So you got little, that's where it's tricky, I didn't like that bar there. You hit undo because I moved it and then undo. So here you have a lots of stickers to choose from to put them on your image as a markup tool. Here's where I chose the one and two. So let's say I go here and I've already got a one here and a two here. I can right click that number and I could advance that number if I wanted to start a sequence at a higher number, you can copy that number, you can cut that number, you can even delete that number off of your image. So that allows you to sequence events within your image. Here's the pencil tool, which is basically a free hand pencil tool. I don't want to save that to the system or to the image. Here is where you can bring up your fonts or where you start to type. Here's your text where you can type out whatever you want. Here you got a button, which is your copy. So you can copy the text, you can cut the text from the the image. You can bold your text, italicize, underline, and make it a strike through. And if you're using code, you can put the code blocks to put codes on an image. Here's where you actually use a header. So if you wanted to make it a larger text, here's a superscript. Here is a subscript. Here's where you can highlight text within your image. Here's where you can go down and choose a different color highlight. Here's where you choose a different color uh, background for the text that you have. Now I don't want to include an extra text so I'm going to hit undo. Now if I did, let me go back and redo, if I wanted to change the text properties I could come here and choose a different font. I could then change the size or change the size here. So there's several ways that you can edit or modify the text on your image. Here's where you can magnify. So if I want to magnify this particular section here, I just simply move over that and as you can see here Here's where I magnify and it move over and it becomes a magnifier where you can move it all over. So if you're using this as, as and talking about an image and you're making a YouTube video, then you can go through this and use this as your magnifier as you're discussing an image. And you don't have to leave it here. You can simply go back and undo, in this case, undo, and it takes it off. So that's a magnifier that you can add to your image. Here's where you got to add a blur box where I blurred this. Let's say that someone's looking out of the barn here or the house here and it's a small child and we're not sure about if we have permission to use those we could simply come over here and blur that particular window we don't have to make it that size we can make it smaller 
simply drag it over and it would blur the child in that window but let's go back and undo 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 and we take it off that image so that was the blur feature here's the crop and ninja image so if I wanted to crop I could go and select a particular area and crop that I'm not going to here is to resize an image we can open it up this is your width and height of this particular image that I saved you can come in here and change the pixel size or you can choose this and change it as in percentage size or you can lock it in here is where you can actually choose a different color or you can add transparency to a, like a, if you save it as a JM a, a, not a JPEG but a bitmap it allows you to add transparency here's where you can select a shape of a border or where you can add properties to your text so as I, you can see here there's not a whole lot of markup tools but it's very basic so if you're just looking for a markup tool just to mark up images and all you're doing is simple markup then you might want to install annotator on your Linux system so for those of you that are looking for an annotator program no matter what Linux system you have as long as you have flat pack set up on your system you can download and install this on your Linux system so hopefully this video has been helpful to you and have a great day